In this video, we're going to solve a really big first world problem for my friend. He's got this picture frame he needs to move out of the way of a TV, and it's sort of tricky because there's this vaulted ceiling we have to clear, so we can't just slide the TV straight up and out of the way. I really want to share this one with you because without CNC, this would be really hard to make, and it's because all the links in this mechanism need to be perfect for it to work smoothly. If even one of the links is a tiny bit too long or too short, the whole thing will just bind up on itself and the picture either won't sit flat against the wall when the picture's down or it won't go all the way up. And not only that, but we need two perfect sets of these links, one for each side, and they're not the same. They're mirror images of each other. So we've got eight unique parts with tight tolerances and requirements for the length of every link. The bore sizes at the hinges all need to be sized perfectly, like within a thousandth of an inch or so, so we can snugly press bearings in. Everything's got to be square and flat so that the whole thing runs straight, and there are all kinds of sweeping and smooth features that you just can't make on a manual mill. But with CNC, not only can we do it, we can do it easily and perfectly with the press of a green button. We can do it twice, both times just as perfectly, with no additional effort or even real craftsmanship to begin with. And if you're short on craftsmanship like I am but still want to make stuff, you can just have a CNC machine do all the heavy lifting for you and still somehow at the end of the day get that sense of satisfaction like you made the thing. And my lack of craftsmanship isn't exclusive to metalworking. I also needed something that would push the painting off the wall to start the initial motion of the frame. And for that, I hammered bearings into some CNC 3D printed parts to smoothly apply pressure to the back of the frame to get things moving. So for the links themselves, everything's going to be made out of these 1x1 one one inch 6061 aluminum square bars. And they're pretty dirty, so we'll cut them to length. Then I like to spray them down with a little bit of WD-40 and wipe them down with some Scotch-Brite. Because it does a really good job cleaning them up, and it actually adds a really nice surface finish. They get this like kind of brushed satin look that looks really good, and I, it, I feel like it helps protect the surface a little bit. So it's really nice. So every side of the picture frame is going to get one of these assemblies. Uh, this guy is going to be mounted to the wall with these holes, and it'll fold up like this. The picture frame will be mounted right here, and we've got these sort of reliefs sort of in this corner and in this corner uh, so that when we get to the top of the motion, they're going to fold up on themselves like this and stop. So it won't be able to travel beyond this point, and same is true up here. It'll kind of lock up nicely, and then it should just fall when we let everything back down. So all these links are, you know, they're different lengths, but they all have quite a bit in common and we can machine them all the same way. So if we take a cross section, we can see that for every single link, there's a side that has sort of two bearings pressed in. And so for these, we're gonna have to do some machining from this side and then some machining from the other side. So we'll have to flip it over. The same is true down here, but in the middle, it's kind of sweet because all the work can be done from one side on each one of these links. So let's sort of open one of these up and take a look. So we've got three folders here, sort of one for every operation. We've got this folder where we're going to machine everything from the top here. So we're going to do the majority of the work. And then the next folder you can see here, this is po green arrow is positive Y, X is positive, or the red is positive X and the blue is positive Z. And then we're going to flip it back over and we're actually going to, uh, this is where we have to machine in the other bore for that double bearing hinge. And uh, we're going to pick up on this pocket. Sorry, it'll actually be more like this on the mill where the X is the, the green is positive Y and uh, red is positive X, blue positive Z again. And uh, we're just going to put in that bore. Sorry, it looks like I'm also doing some other, some chamfering and thing. Yeah, so just some cleanup and some deburring here on, on both sides. And then lastly, the mounting holes. We are going to put it up on its end like this and just machine in these three holes. So we have some spot drilling and then some drilling. So let's go back to this first operation here. Um, with my machine, because I don't have an automatic tool changer, I'm going to have to sort of, I prioritize, you know, I'll do all the work in this area and then all the work in this area that I'm going to do with my three eighths, three flute aluminum end mill. And that is pretty much all of this stuff. So everything you see right here, like all of this adaptive clearing, then we have some contouring and clean up the walls. We're making these bores and then 2D contouring them. All this stuff out here, this is all done with the three eighths, three flute aluminum end mill. So we do the work here. Then we'll come over and do the work over here. And then everything else, I believe, is just the chamfer mill. So there's only two tools for this whole job, which is really sweet, uh, especially for me because I don't have a tool changer. Yeah, so here you can see we're getting into some chamfering and the same is true over there. And then we are done in this operation. So let's take a look at what that looks like on the mill. 
Here's the first toolpath where we're roughing out the material to let the link sort of lock up on each other in the upper position. This is a 2D adaptive clearing operation. The end mill, the footage is sped up, but the end mill is spinning at 3000 RPM. We're going, I think, two and a half thousand feet per tooth. This is a 40,000 step over and we've got half an inch of depth here. So this will keep going until you can see that wall is getting more and more pronounced until that wall is cut all the way across the part. And so when we've machined all the way to the wall, and all of this material is gone, we're going to go ahead and sort of clear out the corner of the part. Then we're gonna come back in here and uh, clean up this wall to get rid of those steps on the wall left by the adaptive clearing operation. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the corner here and then start boring out this hole. Now it's difficult to see because you just see this green line traces the center of the toolpath, but we're gonna go all the way through the part and we're gonna bore a hole at this diameter. Then next we're gonna come in and helical ramp again now. To, to clear out this bore. Now I shouldn't have done it this way. I should have plunged and helical out, but it was easier to program this way and you only kind of regret it as you're watching it machine. And then we will clean up this here with an adapt or with a 2D contour. And then we're done with this side and we will sort of move over here. So let's go see what that looks like. This is the tail end of that 2D adaptive clearing operation, the roughing. Then we're gonna go ahead and nibble down that corner with another 2D adaptive clearing operation. And you can see here, I made a mistake in the heights tab. That's why the tool is retracting so high. It shouldn't be moving that high, but uh, that's why that's happening. And here we're coming in with a 2D contour operation and look how much nicer that wall finishes because the 2D contour operation, like look at the facets on the corner here. You see those vertical lines? This is gonna get rid of that because the 2D contour operation is a finishing operation. It's not a roughing operation and roughing operations don't leave very nice surface finishes. They just kind of focus their attention on clearing out the most amount of material sort of as quickly as possible. And here we're ramping in at um, a two degree angle. We're running at 3000 RPM, two and a half thousand feet per tooth. And we're running at 3000 RPM. This is gonna go all the way through to the bottom of the part and you'll soon see a little sort of flat peel out off the bottom. Yeah, that lets us know we're all the way out. Now we are creating the bigger bore and this is that bearing pocket. We're roughing it out. This is where I should have just plunged into the empty space and then helical out of that. But um, we're plunging here, so this is um, much slower and it could have been done more aggressively and all that. But you know, if I was making 10 of these things, I would watch this video intently and then kind of make tweaks. But you know, if we're only making a couple, that's fine. And so here, there's the nicer wall finish. And here we're crossing to the other side to start work on the other side. And that little camera fumbling you just saw there was because the table actually ran into the tripod that was holding the camera. But what you're looking at here is a few seconds later. And um, so we cleaned out that outside corner. And if you stare at that rounded outside corner, you can kind of see these vertical lines. And those are facets left by a roughing operation because um, like we just said, the roughing operations, they don't leave great wall finishes because they don't focus their attention on that. They're just trying to remove material as quickly as possible. So you'll see in a moment here, when we come back and do a 2D contour on that outside surface, it's gonna look a lot nicer. So here, uh, we first machined the bearing pocket, and now we're just machining that clearance hole. We gotta go all the way through here, because if you remember, when we flip this, si uh, when we flip this part over to machine the other side, we're actually going to use the probe uh, to pick up off the middle of that bore so that we can match the bearing bore on the other side to the bearing bore on this side as nicely as possible. And, the reason this, the whole thing, um, you know, this thing needs to be really accurate. Like the center to center distance of the hinge points needs to be pretty bang on. Otherwise this whole mechanism is going to bind up. And because we're able to machine all the bearing pockets in the same operation, that's why we're able to get this kind of accuracy. And there you go. It cleaned up that wall. Now we got a really, really nice surface finish. Looks like we did it twice there. And we're coming over here and just kissing this edge. And everything we just watched there was this part of the job from here to here. We just watched all of this clearing and um, all these tool paths use that three eighths, three flute aluminum end mill to clear the material, you know, clean it up, make the bores and all that. Now we're gonna move on to the next tool. So I'm gonna change the tool to a chamfer mill and we are gonna break all the hard edges we left up here with that three eighths, three flute aluminum end mill. It'll let us press in the bearings a little nicer cause we'll have a 45 degree lead in. And it also just helps break the edge, which looks really good and it takes away the sharpness. You can cut yourself pretty easily on a hard edge like this. So um, it looks good, you won't cut yourself and it'll help us with the, uh, with the bearing press fits. Let's go see what that looks like on the mill. 
So this is that chamfer mill. It's also a 3 8 tool, but it's only got two flutes. It's spinning at 3,000 RPM, but it ends up moving a little bit slower. I think it ends up somewhere around 10 inches per minute, but it does a really great job at breaking the hard edges. You can see they look really good, and it's going to help us push those bearings in with the chamfer on the bearing pockets. So we're done with this first operation. Um, we've machined everything we possibly can from this side, and now we just got to flip it over and open up that bearing pocket from the other side. Before I take this out of the vise, I do like to check a few things. Like here, we're gonna measure the size of the bearing pockets to make sure that they are where we wanna be. And I also like to grab a bearing and kind of try pushing it in. Now, it won't go in by hand, which is a good thing, because we're gonna use a press to push them in so they won't come out. But I can feel that it wants to go and my sizes are all good. So when we're happy with that, and we're sure we're not gonna have to make any adjustments, we can take it out of the vise. Now, I like to make sure there's no like chips laying on the vise jaws. But as uh, soon as we're happy, we can uh, put it back in the vise, clamp it in, and now we can start getting ready for the second operation. So that second folder where you machine a few things in from this side. So like we said, we're done with this whole folder. So like all of these tool paths from this side, they're all done. Now what we just did is we sort of flipped it over in the vise like this. So let's go to our second folder and we can see that our work coordinate offset moves. We're now at the top of the part, but we are in the center of this bore. And the operations that we're gonna do are all these ones here. So we are gonna machine in this bearing pocket, that green helical ramp, what you see there, is machining in this bearing pocket. Uh, that'll be the first operation. Then we'll clean it up with a 2D contour to get a really nice surface finish. Then we're gonna go ahead and just chamfer a few things. Again, break these hard edges. We'll also do a little bit of work over here with that 3 8 2 flute chamfer mill. And so let's go see what that looks like on the mill. But first, we gotta find our position. We gotta move this work coordinate offset. So we gotta probe in here. So let's just jog the probe over into the center of the bore. Then we're gonna run a probing routine that's gonna find the um, exactly the center of this bore. So I'm touching it with my finger here just to make sure that blue light goes off. It's a sanity check to make sure I know I'm not going to crash. But this is the probing routine running. It's touching all sides of that bore in X and Y to make sure we're in the middle. And I do sometimes like to do a sanity check and I will probe in twice just to make sure everything is working. Uh, it's definitely not a time saver. <laughs> it's more of like my um, mental anxiety with this stuff. Because at this point, we're, we're along quite a ways and I don't want to scrap the part. So I like to make sure we've jogged it up and over so we can touch the top of the workpiece. And now X, Y, and Z are all zero at the top of the piece and in the middle of that bore. And that's good because for this job with all of these tool paths, that's exactly where we need to be. Our work coordinate offset is at the top of the piece and in the middle of that bore. So this whole thing is going to start out with a helical ramp into the bearing pocket. And then we're going to clean up the surface finish and finish off with some chamfers. So let's see what that looks like. And again, we're going to come in and do a helical ramp down into the part. And this is where we're cleaning up the actual bearing pocket. Now, again, I should have just plunged into the empty space and slowly moved out until we got to size. But instead, I'm ramping and I am leaving a 10,000 skin here because this is a roughing operation. Then you'll see in a minute here, we're going to come back with a 2D contour. There it is to clean up the surface and bring it to size. Now let's change over to the chamfer mill and keep going. And again, we'll break those hard edges to keep us from cutting ourselves. The part will look a little bit nicer and it'll also be easier to press the bearings in because we've got a bit of a chamfer, a bit of a lead in. And now we're really getting there other than having to do it seven more times, which I won't show on camera. But again, I take another bearing, make sure it feels good, measure it to make sure we're close. And it's a pretty good looking part. We just got to put in those holes that'll secure the, uh, secure the, that link to the wall with some number eight screws, but it is looking really nice. Now the very last step is to put the holes in that will let us get some wood screws in there to secure this thing to the wall. Now we are both spotting and creating the countersinks for the wood screws that are going to go in here. I like to use a little bit of cutting fluid and here we're cutting the clearance hole for that number eight wood screw. And let's do one last sanity check here. Let's throw that wood screw into the hole just to make sure that our countersink is deep enough, that the clearance hole is big enough and all that before we take it out of the vise. Because here it's still easy to uh, fix things, but once it's out of the vises, we've lost our position and it gets a little harder. Now I know we were just staring at the bearings pressed in in that last shot because I didn't exactly film this in the right order, but here we are pressing the bearings in into those pockets and there's about a two thousandths interference fit here. And yeah, this is a one way trip for these bearings. They are not coming out and that is a good thing because it gets us away from having to install those snap rings, which you probably saw earlier in the video and I decided not to do. But yeah, this came out really great. They are not coming out and they're in there nice and tight and square. 
And if you're wondering what this monstrosity of a plywood uh, mock-up is, well, it's exactly that. It's a mock-up of where this lifter is going to go uh, at my friend's place. So there is uh, a vaulted ceiling just like that at his place. There is, if you see that cutout below the frame, that's where there's going to be a TV. And that, you know, that thing of fence boards is a mock-up of the painting itself. Now, that thing is crazy heavy. Um, all they had was pressure treated, so that weighs probably, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 pounds or something like that. And the picture is definitely not that. So it struggles a little, it wobbles a little, but it's a very simple mechanism. It's like a bar that rolls on top. This is a wireless motor controller that I got off Amazon for like 30 bucks. And there's just some brackets and a high torque motor up there that just spin one direction and then spin another direction. So they let the frame up by winding some nylon webbing around it. And that pulls on the bottom of the picture frames. And those links we made just kind of guide all the motion and it just kind of works. Came out really slick. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks for watching.